Geese have big feet. It's great for swimming, not so good for tiptoeing across crops and lawns. So when 200 Canadas start dropping into crow's space, he needs them gone. Every year they come in, what I do is I just come in, they shovel away at the banks of the pond all the way around. They come out onto the lawn and make a hell of a mess out on the lawn. Sometimes they come in in the evening, sometimes in the morning. Pushed them off last night, get them away. So hopefully there's nothing on there this morning, so hopefully they're going to come back this morning. But it's just a gamble, but they do do a lot of damage here. To help him out this morning, he has the man he now calls Mark Winger Windsor. Slightly unfair, but he's the only person he could find at short notice. He's got a thing about crows, not me. He hasn't got a thing about me, but now he's got a thing about shooting crows. So he's been, he comes down it. Every opportunity he's got, he comes down as a bang up on the crow. So he's been uh, shooting those the last few weekends. So he's, he's down here this weekend. And as soon as I mentioned shooting something a bit bigger, and there's a chance that he can hit it, he thought he'd, he'd take the chance. So. Even though we are a good few miles from the sea, shooting wildfowl in England and Wales means using non toxic shot. Andy and Mark are using steel today, so Crow has had his new Italian over and under multi choked with special Briley chokes to take the steel. Game balls, mammoth heavy load. Yeah, steel's all right out to about 50, 55 metres, I find it. Maximum. Can you see that far? I can't see that far. I can't hit stuff that far anyway. Yeah. Yeah. 36. Yeah, 36 rays. 36 grand freeze, yeah. yeah. A lot of shot in there. Will be, yeah. yeah. Need all the help we can get, mate. I do. I do. Crow sets up two hides in the darkness, one for Mark and the other for him and Les, bringing it to three guns. To help lure them in, he's been sent some Silicox Canadas from UK Shoot Warehouse. Crow really likes the way they move and the fact they make light work. You can carry a whole gaggle's worth at a time. Wind goes in there, you face them into the wind. Wind goes in there and keeps them up like that. They rock. They do look quite effective as it goes. Um, the pigeon ones, they work well and the crow ones look well. Especially when it's windy, they work bloody well. I enjoy, I enjoy ducks, you know, ducks and, and geese. It's a different style of shooting than what they're used to, you know, pigeons and crows, it's usually fast and furious sort of stuff. This is more of a, a stealthy, you know, don't get seen, get them in as close as possible, especially Andy, he needs them as close as possible. early for us there, obviously we've got to be careful where we shoot, that's all the safe direction there. Really we wanted them a little bit higher, so after I've shot, they went up straight out and straight forward over Andy, but they didn't, they kind of just turned around and went back, which is a bit of a shame, but hopefully we'll get some more skeins coming and it should be a little bit The second skein is only a few minutes later while Crow and Ruby are collecting the birds. Again, Mark shoots two for two and Les gets a good shot across the field. With so many birds about, this is not one for the pot, although these will all be eaten. It's a pest control job. That's all it is, it's just pest control. Well, you look at the mess they're doing on the lawn. It's just a pain in the neck, they really are. But, yeah, well, we're shooting now, and hopefully they'll come back again this evening and we'll shoot a few more. But just want them off the governors going mad about it. But I'll get back to the idea, some more coming. The birds have unfortunately arrived in big lumps, giving us less opportunity really to make a big impression. But the ones that do come on their own are dealt with in style. Mark delivering a textbook what? headshot. Oh, well, yeah. When they come into a lake, you know, when they're decoying, they've got a nice white illuminated side on their cheek, you see, so you can really see that. And if you focus hard on that point, it's always nice and, and ethical to kill something very quickly rather than see it, you know, walk away. So you'd rather just shoot them straight, straight from the front end in the head and they just drop straight away. It's lights out, it's the best way to shoot them. Obviously when they're up in the air, say 40, 50 yards up, you can see all the breast and that's nice and white so you can see that but you don't get this on the, uh, on the low side shooting. So. Yeah, we've done well there. We've got, I think we've got, I reckon we've got half a dozen, maybe, maybe eight already. So we're doing all right to be fair. It looks like we've had the best fit when another straggler heads over. Mark again drops the goose with the game ball steel.
Pro is happy that everyone has had some sport and he's particularly chuffed with Ruby's performance. But today she's just been flat out, she's been picking up, she jumped over uh, three rails on a, on a fence over there with a goose in its mouth, I couldn't believe it. But yeah, she's been, she's been marvellous, she has. Yeah, she's, I'm, I'm really impressed with that. As we tidy up, the daylight reveals Crow looking like a wild fowler in his new Jack Pike all-in-one. He's as snug as a bug in a rug, and about time. Apparently he's been asking them to make something like this for ages. They've finally done it, and they've come up trumps with these. The problem is when you've just got, you go out night shooting and sitting in a high seat, your jacket comes down to your middle, your trousers come to the middle, and when you uh, sit down, your jacket tends to ride up and you get a chill in the back. But these, is, it's right up the back. And uh, as I would say, they, they are the dogs. They, they really are good. I'm impressed with them. I'm on fire. So, uh, do they? You like them, do you, Mark? As you can see, we've had a bit of a uh, bit of a mishap today. A couple of the geese come round. Um, we shot a few, and one of them obviously caught wind of the smell of Andy Crow, um, and it panicked massively. So, what you can see, it came straight back at us like a torpedo. Um, nearly killed you, David, didn't he? You ducked, you ducked out at the right time and, uh, and hit the bloody tree. That's what happens when they know when Andy Crow's about. Altogether, we have 13 geese on the ground and given a good number of birds a good reason not to come back.